What are you gonna name this chicken? Hello! <laughs> I asked Florida where the shower is here. This is like a foot massage for scrub. Yeah. It's terrible. It's warm. I was sleeping on the banana leaf mattress. It was but fine. The problem was I was sleeping next to the wall, so it was kind of chilly. Mm. And you didn't have a blanket. Yeah, I slept with that. It was fun, though. We did end up having a 3.45 a.m. bathroom break where several of the kids got up and went to the bathroom. <laughs> and Laura somehow had an alarm set on her watch at 1 a.m. So I was, like, in the dark, like, trying to find the watch and turn it off. But besides that, it actually went really well. <laughs> Well, last night, before we went to bed, we had some incredible conversations with the wonderful women here. And one of their biggest questions was, how many cows did I have to pay as a dowry to get such a beautiful and amazing wife as Kendra? And it was fun to talk about the different traditions. It really blew their mind that we don't use a dowry system of offering cows to the family of the bride. So we're asking the Madungadu, the leader of the village. Did I say it right? Madugudu. Yes. Uh, what is the average income in a month of one of the villagers? Yeah. Between 40 and 60 dollars, US dollars in a month. And so last night one of the questions they asked us was how much would we spend for an average breakfast in the United States? Because they typically don't eat breakfast here. It's an additional meal, additional expense. And we said maybe five to ten dollars between our whole family for the cheapest breakfast, you know? And that blew their mind because they would never spend that much of their money on a single breakfast. I found a perfect stick and then I showed it to her and pointed to this. And then she helped me make this. You made a little broom. Yeah. Janae's feeding the piggies. Hey, buddy. She named this one Snort. Yeah. This one's Snort Snort. This one's name is Mama. She's babies. Those are the piglets. Anytime Janae comes in to go to the bathroom, she says, Hi, piggies. <laughs> yeah. Caleb is getting to use a machete. This is his top priority. Janae got a chicken. She has orange eyes. How'd you pick it up? Well, she helped me. You handed it to her? Yeah. What are you going to name this chicken? Bucky. Bucky? Yeah. All right, so they are breaking up these mud stones to create a traditional oven for cooking sweet potatoes. Yay. They built the oven. All right, from all their chickens, they've got some eggs for the day. I helped make this, and now we start fire. Yeah. They just made another broom. So look, they take the banana leaves. We're gonna hit it on the rock. To help you. Good job. All right, we are now going to fetch water. One of the difficulties with fetching water is that the water is always way down in the valley. So it's quite a trek down. The other kids are already down here. There's a little stream. Do you hear the water? Yeah. So this was built here in 2007. Kendra, what did they do before this? Yeah, from the stream. Yep, stick it up in there. Good job. So people come from all around to get their water here. They're using a banana as a cork. It's doing 40 liters up the mountain. I carried one of those up and I was huffing and puffing. All right, so they're making the, the d banana leaf disc to put on their hat. Okay, but can you walk with the water with no hands? I don't know, the grass was not that hard yesterday, but... Water? <laughs> so, Kendra's dream has come true. I want to hold a little baby. Yeah, we've seen how they wrap them up and <laughs> place them on their back, and a woman here offered to let Kendra hold her baby. Yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> so cute! Yeah, I 
Oh, there we go. Women here are picking up their water, walking up the hill with the babies on their back. Kendra's getting a little sense of what this is all about. Hello! She is so cute. Scovia? Scovia. This is Scovia's mom here. She's just two months old. So they'll add another layer on and then to protect the baby from the sun. This is yeah. over the top. Now you have to take her at your back. You yes. have to take Gina at your back. <laughs> but when you carry baby in your front, I'm not sure if you can cultivate with your yeah, baby. Exactly, you can't work. Yeah, it's in the way, yeah, yeah. Um, when the baby is about six months old in America, then you put them on your back. It's been really amazing to have a translator here no, so we can have, really have conversations with the people here. So cute! I love babies. I just love babies. Yep. When they offered to let someone try to hold the baby, I was like, me, me! <laughs> <laughs> at the seven years, oh. uh, the sisters can carry the baby at their In one year, you'll be carrying babies. Yeah, and we've she seen. Would be carrying, yeah. So she would be carrying a baby. Get ready yeah. in one year. <laughs> yeah, you will be carrying babies on your back. It's actually the last born. Oh, this one is? She's going to sleep. Yeah. Tell, her, tell her all babies her today, bring her back. <laughs> well, did you ask what kind of diapers they use? Oh. You helped put her to sleep. Well, yeah. I just was lucky enough to get to hold her. All right, how is it feeling? Heavy. Heavy. It's really muddy right there, Elise. Be careful. <laughs> You're doing good. They put it on their heads with no hands. And they practically run up with them. Loden is saying try. She's doing it with no hands. You're doing it. This takes concentration. I really don't want to drop the water. It's impressive, Kendra. Yeah, I carried this on my head the whole time. So proud of you. I'm getting lunch ready. Or do I say they had some more questions about how we hold babies with wraps. Not so good for working in the field. Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> I asked Florida where the shower is here, and this is the shower. They don't have a hose or running water. You would just get cold water filled with a basin, and you would just clean yourself off. This water is not actually clean. Yeah, that's okay. So, but you just have to fetch yeah. water in the basin. You fetch water, stick yes. it here, soap here. Mm -hmm. So they're sticking the sweet potatoes in the oven. Hubby wants to try it. It's like an oven. It's like an oven. All right, Isaac, biggest thing learned so far here. Definitely that I absolutely love modern toilets. Something you maybe don't appreciate until you don't have it, right? Yeah, I do not appreciate it. There's at all. also a lot of other things that come with like modern plumbing, dishwashers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Washer they don't they dryer. don't have any of those appliances. One thing that blew my mind is like I've always thought if I really want to do something, I can work really hard at it and it can become my career. But for them, I don't know if they think as They're much that be way. They're gonna be their whole life. I'm grateful that we got to share that with them. It's been really amazing to learn from them. <laughs> it's time for the piglets to eat it. Drink it from its mama pig. The, the mom pig is actually really big. Really big. Really, really big. Mm, they're eating. Cute little baby pig. For the last Saturday of Umuganda, Umuganda is the fourth Saturday here in Rwanda and for the morning time everyone goes out and works with their community to rebuild and fix things, clean up, and it's just a really cool initiative that has led to so much growth and progress in Rwanda because everyone's working together. Yeah, and the leader of the village gets yes, to help the organize it. Mudugudu. Magundugu. Mudugudu. Mudududu. Dang it, I can't say it. <laughs> the leader of the village. The Mudugudu, which is the chief of the village, yep. decides where best to allocate the energy. Do they need to be building a home for someone that needs a space? Do they need to be fixing the roads? Do they need to be cleaning up? Like, what do they need to do? Jenny! Boom! 
<laughs> Good work. Poor people who don't know where to live, who don't have a house. Actually, uh, his house was distracted mm -hmm. by the heavy rain last Aww. time. Yeah. So for the next to Muganda, they want to help him to get a new house, which oh. means uh, the, the, all of the build the bricks. The village, they will build with the bricks. Uh -huh. and they will help him to build a house without asking him to pay. Yes. So, free uh, just for free all of the people who ja will just come for volunteering mm -hmm. for building the house uh, for, That's awesome. for those people it's uh, so cool we're now taking the water and we're going to be making mud bricks of what they would use to build a home and we learned a new word a new kinyarondan word vuba 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 means fast Quick. Yes. That's perfect. That's the perfect size for you. There's an app that we use in Kigali to, like an Uber Eats, like it delivers groceries or food you order to your house on a motorbike. Yeah. So, it's called, called Vuba. So this park belongs to Florida. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's probably fun to us because we don't do it every day. Yeah. It's been so eye-opening to see another culture close up, and I'm so grateful they invited us into their home. I so wish that I could bring them back to my home in the United States and show them, you know, the little things from our daily life. They would be so interested in loading a dishwasher and going to Costco and all the sorts shower. of things. Yeah. yeah. Good work, Janae. Get it! Step one to building is we need a bunch of dirt and a bunch of water. You are going down. There it is. We're adding water, lots of water. Angelique said that you mix the water and the dirt with your feet. So Elise took off her shoes, she's ready to get in. Hey. This is like the same way Papa makes cement, except for with yeah. a cement. bag. Yeah, a bag of cement. It really is fun to do hands-on work, and we don't do enough of it. That's true. Uh, oh, she's gonna do yeah. Lisa's in. Yay! This is my life calling! <laughs> <laughs> this is like a foot massage or a scrub. Yep. It tickles! <laughs> it does tickle. Smile! Building these bricks really is a big deal. It's the winter time here and it's the rainy season. And so Florida, the house we're staying in, she actually has piled up the bricks that they built during the summer up in their shower area because they're planning on expanding their pig pen so that they can hold more pigs. So all of these bricks that they're storing up and building represent additions to the house or renovations, the fixing up. You get these bricks and then you build onto the house. So they're really getting down into the clay part. This is awesome. All right, Janelle, what do you think? It tickles. We are running, Jine. We need to get everything. You wanna, okay. It's truly inspiring to see how resourceful they are here. You know, the mud in their front yard can make the add-on for the house. And the banana leaves can make the tools to help them do everything. Banana leaves can do anything. That's yeah. the main lesson here. Yeah, anyway, it's just fascinating to see how resourceful they are. Uh-oh. We're gonna make mud bricks, okay? Yes, yep, put please. it in. Yes. Put it in. We're making mud bricks. Uh, Everybody's bringing their mud offering. I'm just pretending this is like a brownie pan and I'm just like. Yeah. And then boom, okay. you got a brick. Our, mud brick. Our first mud brick is here. Okay, let's see, Reese. You gotta do it. Oh. There's a YouTuber that I've really enjoyed who just goes out into the wilderness and builds structures and massive things and this kind of reminds me of that. Okay, okay, okay. Yay! Yay! Bye, Lisi! Why don't you do a put it here. Yeah. Nice. These are great for mud balls. Yeah, that's basically what it is, is a big mud ball. It's got a nice little smack to it. Yeah. Got to fill in all the spots. Oh my goodness. Woo! Did it! There we go. There's our final brick. It has a lot less gaps. So in the winter, these bricks take two to three weeks to dry. They have to cover it because of the rain. In the summer, it takes about a week for the bricks to dry. They already have some dried bricks here, so we're skipping ahead to that part of the process. Now you may hear that beeping noise. That is their electricity meter here, letting them know that the electricity is on. So here's some of the dried bricks. 
And you can see they have gaps in them too and cracks. Like it's not about the perfection. And you look here, I mean, this was built out of the mud bricks. What's fun is Poppy Keith, my stepdad, actually built the house that I lived in all through high school, is made out of adobe brick. And so it had just dirt on the inside, which was really cool. How did you make it so big? It's like a really big house. Yeah, it's just constructed really well, I guess. He and his family, they made it. They made the bricks and then they built a house. The mud house is what we call it. Well, it, it fits the name. Yep. Gotta get the mud. So these are the mud bricks they've made previously. I have a little more respect now for how long that would have taken to make these mud bricks. This really looks like an elephant may have been here. <laughs> well, actually, elephant poop is that more circular. That's true. And it's more like a giant bowling ball. We're building something in her house. I know, super cool. So they're adding a little outdoor pig pen. So they've got the mud bricks. And now Janae's adding the mush in between. This is awesome, we're actually building. I know, we're like building a house. It's cool. We're learning that what we've learned from Lego brick building is useful in this setting. You have to alternate so that there is strength layered throughout the, the building. Then, I didn't think what I learned with then, Legos is, was actually going to be useful. It is. Okay, well, good job, Nancy. Nice. Then you need to put more mud at the top. Good job, team. You may have noticed Isaac is not participating right now. He is not feeling good. And no, he's not the child who has had massive diarrhea. But he's not feeling good. It's kind of like painting. You can always paint over it. But with mud, you can always add more mud and fix any problems. Next layer. There's something super gratifying about this kind of hands-on work. And I think part of it is that it's so immediately evident what you created. You can see it right before you. It's like dry. Yeah, it's mud like gets crusty. <laughs> That's what mud will do. Right, Isaac is yeah. feeling a little bit better. Okay. So we are getting at least a taste of what it would be like to bathe here as the kids are cleaning off the mud. You do it all out of this big bowl. And when they're working in the fields, they get muddy all the time here. So they use one kind of soap here for everything. You need to wash your hands, you need to wash your hair, you need to wash the dishes, you need to wash the clothes. This is the soap. It seems to work really well. It's really good soap. It is. I bet it's like homemade. I wonder if they buy it. Yeah, so this bar of soap is 300 Rwandan francs, which is the equivalent of about 30 cents. And that does the laundry, it does the dishes, it does the showers. That aren't you just throw the mud into it. So they explain that because the mud is wet and the bricks are heavy, you can't actually build the whole building at one time. You have to let the bottom dry and then you continue to build up later. Otherwise, the foundation will fall. Okay. So this is under the dirt oven. The sweet potatoes have been roasted. So they've literally just been roasting in hot dirt. Potato. So our lunch conversation is what do they do for fun? Some of them said a nap. Some of them said drinking soda. Visiting friends. Visiting friends. Sleeping. Sleeping. So video games is a game on the TV that you play with buttons. And you control. And the buttons make the person on the TV jump or yeah, run. Yeah, or jump or do anything. Like, for me, I know, but for them. Yeah, yeah. So but, it's very hard to and then he plays friends. online with friends. Ah. You know? oh, with your friend. So okay. his friend is in the United States okay, plays at the same time as him. I'll He's you now trying to explain surfing to them. Pick this one. You cross up, then you go over, under, and through. 
and like then tying a knot. Yep. And then you And then you just repeat. One of the main ways that these women make a living is by doing weaving. They weave bracelets and earrings and they've done baskets in the past. And so this weaving, they're able to sell at the market. Right, Janae got her bracelet on. I love the colors. It kind of matches your dress right now. Because Janae's tummy wasn't feeling real well, she decided to try some coke. So what's amazing is they actually, Azizi Life has a website where people, even in the United States, can purchase the art that these women make. And so we'll put the link below so you can check that out. While we were finishing up doing the bracelets, the drums arrived. So we were just sharing with the ladies some of our videos. It's a fun way to share about our life. We don't just have to tell them, but we can show them. And they were looking at our channel. They had never heard of Disney or Disney World. Don't know surfing or the beach because they don't go to the ocean here in Rwanda. So it's just amazing. This pig really thinks I'm gonna feed it. It's amazing how many things are different and how much we have to learn from them and what we can share. It's just been really incredible for our family to be here. So out of this plant comes the fiber for the weaving. Whoa. Okay. I've already seen it. Because it's so... And it feels like white hair. Gray hair. It feels like plastic. So that's what all of these are made out of. And all the earrings. And all the baskets. And then they dry it and dye it to that. Oh, they're gonna show us. Alright, so here's the dye. Is that a, a seed? Red. So they make the red, then they stick the fiber down into it. Wow. The long, it's like a... So one thing I wanted to show you about this beautiful village home is their mirror. This is the only mirror in the home. It's right here. It's a little like motorcycle mirror. There's no other mirrors, not in the bathroom, not in the bedrooms. And I love that. I think it says a lot about getting dressed in our dancing clothes. They're going to teach us some authentic dancing. Oh, I hear the bells. I want to wear this instead. There's the bells. I want the my bells on. <laughs> one of the best things about all the clothes here is it's basically one size fits all. You need it longer, you need it shorter, you need it tighter, you need it looser. It works. Nice, Caleb. How do you feel? I, I feel there you go. different. Caleb really wanted the bells on his ankles. So when we went to Volcanoes National Park, we were completely surprised that they had dancing for us. And we did get to dance with them a little bit. What's different about this experience is they're actually gonna teach us how to play the drums and how to do the dance moves. Looking good. All right, so things got pretty muddy. A rainstorm had just come through. And so we're gonna be doing the dancing over here, just on the other side of our mud pit that we made. So the fun thing here is that we're just in a neighborhood and all the neighbors are coming to watch. We have an audience now as we learn to dance.
All right, they asked us to teach them a dance. And so we're doing the Macarena. She's doing it. Florida is teaching Laura and Janae another game, which is balancing the stick, which Florida is remarkably good at. Is it hard, Laura? Janae is spending every spare moment with the goats and the cows. Earlier today, Janae told me that she was babysitting the goats and the cows, and that's what she wanted to do for her job, so she is on it. Caleb's in on the stick balancing game. I've done it for a while. Wow. My uh, tennis racket at tennis. Ah, so this feels kind of similar to that. We prayed for the people that we knew we would meet along the way. Because we knew that even though we hadn't met them yet, they were going to be dear to our heart forever. Thank you for inviting us into your home. I have learned so much from you and will never forget you. We could say goodbye to the toilet. We're saying goodbye to everybody. These gift cards are made out of banana leaves. Can you believe that? Here in the studio, you can see the process that it goes from to be a completed basket. It's made by Florida. Oh, Florida! Oh, that's that's so, cool. so you can look on the back of each of them. Look, this one, Angelique. Oh, she was the girl who was awesome. She was the Mudu Guru. The Mudu Guru. This one is Spadlata. She's the one who had the new grandbaby when we were there. That's the one who wore pants and a pink oh, hat. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was her. That's so cool. What's awesome about a ZZ Life is you can also shop their products online, and so you can support these amazing artisans no matter where you live. This is not sponsored at all. We paid for this experience and we donated to the artisans while we were there. It was just amazing to see their homes and their lives and what they're doing to build a better future for their families. These earrings, definitely worth it. Good night, GSL. Right, we are heading to our place where we'll be staying tonight. This is the bathroom. I will be fasting from oh, Our favorite thing always is to talk to people where we're visiting them. They're doubling up. Yeah! How is it? Comfy! Ah, there's Florida! <laughs>